So hello all. Uh, welcome to another episode of Thrust Talks organized by the PBG Entrepreneurship Development Cell. I'm Ritin Varigal, the host of this episode, followed by Ria Karambelkar, who will be hosting the next talk. Going through the sequence of this uh, episode, I'll be uh, I'll be asking the first set of questions to you, uh, which we which will be about your company, followed by Ria, uh, who will be asking another set of questions, which will be about your college life and other things. Shortly introducing the speaker, his name is Sachin Kumar, and uh, he is the co-founder and CEO at Penline, and he is the alumni of a prestigious. Institute, Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay, and he passed out from electrical department. So I welcome you, sir. Okay, uh, pleasure uh, uh, meeting you, Nathan. E meeting you actually, and yeah. hello to all. How how you guys are doing it? Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely good. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, first things first. I would like you uh, to introduce yourself briefly so that the audience could know you better. So uh, I'm co-founder of Panini Electromobility. So we are the organization who are working on the cutting edge battery tech actually. So if you look at, at large, uh, I mean, this is uh, what, you know, is the biggest problem uh, with the electric vehicles. Um, uh, before this, I uh, had co-founded another startup back in 2013 uh, while I was undergrad at IIT Bombay. Um, and then that for about four years, and then we had to shut it down in 2016. So, I mean, this has been, you know, a brief about uh, what I have done so far. Let's let's uh, take it from here and see that. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, sir, Mr. Sachin. So I'll be uh, moving forward and uh, to the next question, uh, which will be related to a startup, the beginning of your startup. Uh, so that uh, my question to you is that how did the idea of the of your startup uh, Penine came to you? Okay. Uh... So it's actually not uh, per se, you know, the ideas don't uh, come, uh, you, you actually don't have to look for the ideas. You see a problem, then you see, could you do something about it? And the moment you realize that, okay, could, could I try to do something about it? I mean, uh, you know, uh, finding that you could do something about it may not be the right uh, word to start with. So you try to see that, okay, could I do something about it? Then you're like, okay, we could do this. This could be the process. Then you realize that, okay, we will be able to do something about it. And then you try to find people that, okay, this is the skill set we are missing. Uh, as a person, this is what I'm missing. So you try to look for the co-founders and people around you. And that's, um, you know, that's where it goes on. So I saw a problem that, okay, this is what is needed. So back in 2018, you know, uh, the talk of the EVs was the, what, uh, the fundamental things are missing, the infrastructure, the battery tech, and everything is missing. In, as per we look in India, right? And uh, considering my skill set, uh, that has been primarily into the technology side uh, as well as the business side. So I look after the technology and business at Panini. So uh, I mean, we realized that okay, the, the other skills that I was uh, looking forward to uh, is that someone you know who could look after the operation, the customer relations, and everything. And that's when you know my uh, friend of mine, uh, Nitesh Pandey, who is my co-founder. Was there so? I mean, it, it's a, it's a combination of the people who are around you, and then you realize that okay, this is the problem we are solving, and we have the skill set, and then the journey starts from there. Okay. Uh, uh, another question uh, which I am very curious about is that uh, what is the current situation of electrical uh, electrical uh, vehicles? Uh, talking about uh, uh, the awareness of the people related to electrical vehicles or uh, how many electrical vehicles are operational uh, in in this country? Can you uh, talk about that? Okay, so uh, when when we actually talk about the electric vehicles, right? Uh, one a few segments that had been uh, you know uh, completely ignored, and that they have flourished in India is that you know the shared mobility in the three in the three uh, wheeler segment. So that is something that has actually you know uh, flourished a lot, uh, uh, starting from twenty fifteen. So currently, there would be about 2.8 million uh, three-wheeler. There would be about 500,000 uh, electric two-wheeler. There would be uh, a few thousand cars, only say about 10,000. But uh, the segment that India has always been good at is the three-wheelers and the two-wheelers. I mean, we are the world's largest uh, using population of the two-wheeler. I think we produce about 18 million two-wheelers a year. So yeah, that's yeah. that's the segment we have to look at. You know, the the gauge that we use is that you know how many electric cars are there. Uh, may not be uh, very fitting per se because in uh, the concentration of uh, the cars in US is very different versus what's in India. So if you try to use the same parity, it will not fit in. You'll always be looking at that, okay, we are actually not getting any traction on that. 
But if you look at the segment that we have always been um, favoring, the two wheelers and the three wheelers, then you look at that, okay, we are gaining quite a uh, lot of momentum. And when coming to the other segment of vehicle, as the technology matures for the local environment, they'll flourish. And I mean, you, you will see that, you know, in just coming few uh, years, maybe in next three years or so, you will see a lot of traction, a lot of electric vehicles across the segment uh, on the roads. So, and there's been quite a lot of awareness uh, among the users uh, in last one year or so. I mean, during the lockdown, uh, post lockdown, uh, what I've seen is that, you know, a lot of people know about the electric vehicle and there's a willingness to move on to the electric uh, vehicle side. So, I mean, yeah, there, there's a quite, quite curiosity and intent among the people. Mm -hmm. Okay. And another question is that, is the government supporting the technology of electric vehicles? Uh, uh, are these uh, yeah, are these any you. laws? Yeah, are these any laws that uh, that are helping uh, you towards your uh, goal? Like, uh, they're trying to uh, they're trying to do a lot actually. Uh, now considering that you know the way government function, these guys are doing uh, pretty great actually. If you look at most of the states, uh, they have electric vehicle policies now, which is actually pretty good. Uh, now, implementation of that has been, you know, a bit all over the place. But then again, you know, things take time. When you start something new, you cannot expect a perfect execution on that. But yeah, uh, it seems pretty good that, you know, over the course of next few years, these policies will help a lot, actually. Okay. Well, so, you're, so you're basically saying that the government is uh, looking towards the development of this sector? Yes, yes, very much yeah. so. And they should be yeah. looking forward to considering our oil consumption and oil imports, actually. Okay, 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 right. So moving forward to the next question, like uh, after graduation from IIT Bombay, a prestigious institute where uh, you uh, getting a job, getting a well-paid job is a very good thing, like a very easy thing, actually, uh, as compared to other colleges. So why did you choose a startup and uh, how... Uh, how your parents or or your family members your peers reacted uh, to uh, your decision can you tell a little about that well uh, i had already chosen that so i started uh, the uh, illumine my first venture when i was in second year so i had already chosen the path now coming to the second part of the question you know how family reacts <laughs> they were not very happy <laughs> Uh, see what uh, considering that you know the point you realize that okay this is what you are good at and this is what you have decided this is where your intent lies now it's not about you know getting a job or something you know there's always a value addition you could do at any place that you, you fit your in in your skill set and area of interest but i had already decided something that okay this is what i'm uh, good at and this is what i'm i have decided to do so i went ahead with that of course you know there are always resistances but then again you know there's uh, not a place where you will not find a resistance if you are trying to do something good Okay, so you mentioned that you started a startup in second year. So can you tell a little about that? Well, I was always a curious person, um, Prima Facey. So, uh, I mean, I, I started looking around at uh, clean energy uh, very uh, long ago, actually, when, you know, when the talk of the pollution and everything, the environmental change were happening a lot. I mean, if you look at, you know, the entire last decade has been talking about the uh, climate change, right? But things were uh, moving very slow on the ground. So we decided that, okay, we have to do something on uh, clean technology. So that's when we, you know, we started looking at solar as a, uh, from the consumer side of things. So what you see now, residential solar and everything, we decided to go on the smart uh, product side of things. So uh, on the consumer end, you know, I, I already enabled a uh, smart solar system. That's what we started working on. And we commercialized a few products. Uh, one thing uh, we did not do very well uh, was planning the fundraise. Uh, I think beside that, you know, the every, uh, product and everything else was pretty good. I mean, when you, when you start, you know, the, your, uh, the mistakes are of, of course going to happen. And it's a big learning if you, you know, look at the entire process of learning and, you know, building the uh, life around you. You know, entrepreneurship is um, more than uh, just a job uh, replacement, actually. It is a, a way of living life. It's a culture that you build around you that, okay, this is how uh, I'm going to develop my life around you. Exactly. So, Okay, moving forward, uh, moving forward to your present company, I would like to ask that uh, you have built a team. So, so it's hard to uh, make people believe towards your vision, towards your vision of the company, and it's even hard, uh, harder to make that people work for you to work towards the vision of the company. So, how how did you manage that? Tell me something about that. Uh, and I see there's no specific answer to this particular question. You know, I mean. 
getting people in the early stage ventures uh, has been the biggest problem and still there is so but uh, then again you know along the uh, way when you start working you will always find some people who will believe that okay this some this is something that they actually resonate with and uh, th there will be a lot of people who will say that okay this is good but it does not resonate with them uh, even if their skill set and everything matches with you it may not be a very good idea to have them on board or you know push them uh, to be on board with you because see ultimately people have to feel for themselves you know you could give give it a try and things it's it's a lot about trial and error actually you know finding uh, what people do i mean considering that you know this is a human tendency that uh, what uh, you start working and then you re realize that okay this is something i resonate with or no i mean something may look very good from the surface but when you start working they may appear very differently so i mean th this is a process this is a pure play trial and error process considering that you know if you have a good network of good people that actually uh, you know eases uh, the process mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, so basically, you're feeling that team yeah, building is not an easy uh, easy thing, and it is a trial and error basis. It's on trial or error basis. Agreed. Yeah, totally. I mean, this is the most difficult part actually. Oh, building product and everything else, you know, becomes easy when you look at you know just getting the people on board, the good set of people on board. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, moving forward, I'm uh, about to ask you the the. A very important topic of raising capital right so how did you raise capital did you read uh, raise it from investors or did you borrow money from someone or did you uh, try another method did, uh, tell me something about that right okay so about raising capital uh, there's a lot of noise actually you know about raising capital now uh, coming to the real part of it uh, everyone does not need a uh, venture capital you know generally people when when you say uh, capital it's the equity capital that comes through uh, primarily the venture funds or the angel uh, networks or uh, things uh, around there you should only raise the capital when you actually know that what you are going to do you know most of the time people are able to raise uh, the capital before they even knew that okay what they are going to do and it all uh, fits uh, with them raising capital is always difficult uh, but it's not the most impossible job now coming to our side i did not want to be on that side of things so we uh, started that okay we will try to see what problem we are solving and are we actually fitting in the solution we did not want to take someone's money and because money comes with expectation you know you have to uh, deliver on the expectation otherwise you know it uh, does not actually work very well for everyone in the uh, process and so we realized that okay uh, we should not raise uh, i mean we should not hurry raising the capital you know if we are doing something valuable we'll always be able to raise capital so that should not be a problem so that's why you know we are trying to raise uh, i mean we are about to close uh, the first round of funding now uh, after two and a half years so uh, i mean it's a building a process is more about understanding the problem you know as of this moment we are very sure of that what problem we are trying to solve and what is the product that we are going to be uh, bringing to the market in the long haul Okay, so basically, you are selling that if you uh, if you are working to a vision where, which is very good and you progress to that, so the raising capital becomes more uh, more easy and easy and easy. Right? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, so uh, primarily, you should not actually the aim should not be that uh, your problem will be solved once you raise the capital. It uh, the your problem actually increases uh, with uh, raising the capital. Until you raise the capital, you are free to do uh, at your own pace whatever you would want to do, however you would want to do. But once you have raised the capital, you have set a certain expectation for everyone involved, for your investor that okay, this is what we are going to do. Now, if you don't do that, they will uh, not hold you uh, 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 with a knife. But then again, you know, it's not the process. I mean, uh, there are certain questions that you should have actually figured out earlier. Mm -hmm. And building a venture is not about raising capital. Raising capital is a very small part of it, and it's not that. The asset part it's actually the liability you know the more people you bring okay. on board their mm -hmm. expectation have to be met for it to be a valuable uh, thing in a long haul mm -hmm. okay so a very good thing you uh, you can say uh, you said that it is not an asset but a liability so uh, it pressurizes the, uh, the company to uh, perform more and more and more and uh, it might uh, uh, cause the instability in that company am i right it it does actually it, it uh, it's not the question of might it does actually you look okay. at you know the ratio of success of the venture funded uh, startups uh, and now as per their own records 90% of them die out it, they mm -hmm. die out because there's a limited time with the capital that okay you'll have to so there's no time to figure things out actually they'll have to figure out everything in a hurry 
now mm -hmm. when you are hurrying things up i mean um, as uh, the history tell that you should not hurry the, the things you are you know trying to build uh, in for a long haul mm -hmm. okay so moving forward i would like to uh, introduce i mean uh, go through the topic of the corona coronavirus pandemic like it hit us and it hit us with a very might uh, with it it hit us very hard uh, so how did uh, your company cope up with it like uh, your company is a not a software company i would like to say it is a uh, something related, uh, related yeah, it's a very operation related. intensive yes it is operational so how did you cope up with uh, the challenges it's, it's uh, the first part of it was very difficult actually suddenly everything came to halt for us we are a operational organization so basically we have things uh, uh, running around on the roads and suddenly we re realized that okay there is nothing moving and it happened for about two months then we uh, realized that okay we cannot sit at home uh, because uh, that uh, beyond uh, the money revenue and anything else it was becoming a counterproductive for the mental health then we realized we have to do something and then we started looking at the peripheral segment that okay what is uh, the other what is who is the other person who might be looking for what we are actually doing and then we realized there's a larger segment that is looking for organization like us that is uh, intercity logistics now a lot of evs have started gaining traction in in the intercity logistics so we, i mean if there's if there's a problem it always gives an opportunity you just have to be looking for it so we made a certain effort and then we realized there's a, even a bigger market of what we are doing in the intercity logistics and uh, organizations uh, and when we started looking for it we realized that there are more organization who are looking for us than we are looking for them and then uh, there was a floodgate of the organization of course we could not serve all of them we still are not able to serve all of them but uh, then again every problem brings an opportunity you just have to be willing to look for it yeah so it caused a lot of problems in the logistics department am i right uh, yeah logistics has been an opportunity actually so earlier we were completely focused on the passenger mobility side of things but then we realized intercity logistics is uh, was the only thing that was moving in the if you remember last year lockdown only the essential services so we realized that okay that is a segment who is looking for organization like us a service like us or product like us and that's when we started working in and then we realized that okay there is a bigger and bigger opportunity over there mm -hmm. okay on this note i would like to end the first half of this episode and i would like to um, bring in riya karan bilkar riya please on your video so thank you my uh, my part ends here and riya will be looking forward to uh, after this thank you okay uh, pleasure talking to you ridhi good evening mr sachin sir how are you i am uh, riya karan bilkar i am from second year engineering it engineering department okay. and okay. in the same college of so i would like to continue the second half of our today's session by starting a very interesting question about your college life since you are from iit bombay and we all know how interesting the life of iit ms is i would like to know about your college life your lectures your fun the events you were a part of esel uh, of your college i saw it in your linkedin profile so please tell us about your life in iit bombay i was one of the uh, guys who was uh, not in line actually i was one of one of those guys who never uh, fell in line in the first place so uh, considering that uh, i was uh, pretty bad at uh, academics actually uh, i mean just pure play academics i think if you look at it uh, um, i was pretty bad at that uh, it's not that i did not like things i just didn't want to focus on the scoring side of things i had uh, i mean um, as uh, i told you earlier that in second year itself i have decided that okay uh, the value the uh, iit gives you is not the degree it's not the your cpi it's not the gpa that they give you it's what they teach you that how to uh, build life around anything that you believe in and that's what i learned and i realized i need to capitalize on that not the grades so i focused on learning the things i wanted to learn um, in the uh, first part of i mean when i got into iit i wanted to be a uh, investment banker and by the time i got out i was in um, deep tech actually i mean you know uh, pure play uh, the tech of the tech that you talk you know the core battery technology and everything very few people actually get into that and i was one of uh, the last scoring guys uh, i would say in the entire thing so uh, I, i mean uh, at one point i had actually dropped out of iit bombay itself so when i was uh, in the final uh, in the 2014 
I had actually dropped out of IIT Mumbai uh, because we were running the uh, uh, venture from Delhi and I was based out of Mumbai and then uh, one day I had to come to Delhi and I could not go back uh, for about six months. So oh I missed that. So I missed the end sem exam. Then then I was that was my final uh, sem. That was about eight sem actually. And yeah. then I realized that okay, I mean uh, the IIT Bombay has served the purpose. So if there's no degree, that should also be okay. But then again, there was only one course left. So uh, uh, there was only one course left. So you know, I went back uh, after two years and completed that. So I have a degree. I haven't seen it. So that, that's how the story is. Okay, that's actually great. But uh, out of curiosity, you are a guy from Delhi. It, the the question is out of context. Actually, you are a guy from Delhi. So why did you go to IIT Bombay when you have IIT Delhi? I why wanted, didn't you go to IIT Delhi? I wanted to stay away from uh, my home actually. Uh, oh. See, because uh, you know what so happens is that you know when you are around home, you have to go home, and that actually disturbs uh, what the culture, the new culture that you are trying to build around you. So I did not want to be that person who is at home on the weekend. So I realized that okay, I have to be sufficiently far away from home so that you know. Uh, otherwise, if you look at uh, Delhi, there are three IITs are in 200 kilometer vicinity over here. So there's IIT Delhi, there's IIT Roorkee, there's IIT Kanpur. I could have yeah. been to any, any of these, but I decided that okay, I mean these are too close. Uh, I'll have to be home every weekend, so th then I decided not to be home, and th th <laughs> it, it worked out pretty well actually. So like every other student, you want to be away. You wanted to be away from home. <laughs> Yes, uh, exactly. See, it, it actually helps a lot. Uh, you have been at your home for most of your life. Now yeah. you need to uh, be away from home so that it actually uh, you learn something new, learn to be on your own. That okay, this is because see, ultimately you'll have to build your own life uh, from this point on. Your parents has helped you enough. Now this point on, you'll have to build a life around you. What you would want to. So uh, coming uh, back to coming back home every weekend and weekend, this is going to disturb the uh, new life that you are actually building uh, building around you. So I decided okay, they said let's take the hard step and see how it goes. It went oh. pretty well. Okay, that's that's pretty interesting actually. Um, you told me uh, before that you wanted to be an investment banker. But uh, that was in during the graduation. So when you were young, like very young, what were, what did you wish to become? Like every child has something in his or her mind. Like I want to become this when I grow old. So what did you wish to become? How young you are talking about? Like uh, in, during school time. Are you, I, I, I always business? wanted to be in the energy business. Okay. I did not know how to be in the energy business. I wanted to be in the petroleum or something. I did not know how it actually worked. I actually had no idea how petroleum industry works, what I wanted to be uh, in that. Uh, I mean, as far as I can remember, and this is, I am, I am in the energy business again. So I started yeah. in the solar that was in energy. Now I'm into the electric vehicle, which is, you know, again, around energy. So yeah, life has been, you know, working uh, in a very strategic path that I decided about unknowingly, say, about 15 or 20 years ago. So you actually became what you had decided when you were in school. Yes. You actually uh, accomplished your goal, which is uh, difficult in this generation because mm -hmm. when we are young, we don't know actually what uh, elders do or how they become independent and all. Uh, that is true. That is true. Uh, see, but uh, that's where, you know, the value of taking risk actually comes in the picture. Now, uh, if you yeah, see you have learned most of your things to do anything in life from that point on the quantum of risk you take will actually decide the outcome if you yeah. try to be very uh, safe on that front you will not explore the thing that could have actually resulted otherwise that could have actually led you to learn new things do new things or ultimately do the thing that you wanted to do in the first place yeah absolutely so moving on to the next question, uh, back to your uh, business life. What is the top concern your business for faces today? Uncertainty. There, there's a fresh uh, wave of COVID and lockdowns and restrictions. Uh, this is uh, so uh, now. Last one year has been quite roller coaster actually. If you uh, yeah. look at your primary. Yeah. Uh, there was completely halt and then uh, there was a massive growth 
and then we you know started looking to scale up pretty rapidly now there's a fresh uh, wave of restriction so it is actually bringing the level of uncertainty we are not sure which uh, you know should we hold should we continue to grow should we grow uh, try to grow very exponentially it, that's the uncertainty as of this moment okay okay got um so uh, where do you see india in the field of technology five years down the line according to you now when 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 you say uh, technology you know the, it's a, it's a very vast question right and yeah. now and now coming to uh, we have been pretty good uh, at building things and we have been pretty bad at you know commercializing things on our own look at uh, you know the most of uh, the software uh, built i mean we, we are some of the people in the world who build some of the finest software we have never commercialized it if you look at you know the all the larger saas organization they are not based out of india in fact uh, the organization who actually build the software um uh, come into uh, a, a minor part of that uh, that is if you look at you know the tcs or the wipro or the infosys guys these are the guys who are coding most of the software for the larger organization right but then again we have never been uh, able to capitalize so we have never been able to capitalize on our uh, you know strengths to the level we should have done and this is you know this has been a very repetitive cycle no matter uh, their their support system and ecosystems are coming in so things are looking a little different now but uh, we seem not to be you know catching up with the pace that the world is moving forward now the world is very much moving forward towards the ai we are still not actually very uh, you know aggressive on that front uh, most of the technologies we use in the electric vehicles are not indigenous i mean uh, for the, uh, that matter we don't even manufacture our own cells look at uh, the hardware side of thing we don't have a fabrication lab that actually produces at mass level so most of uh, the electronics you see is uh, owned by americans and built in somewhere in taiwan or china so that's where the fundamental problem is that we have don't have the infrastructure to build the technologies and that's something that you know is uh, the repetitive cycle is not doesn't seem to be ending that's where the uh, so uh, now 5 years seem to be a good enough time for us to do a lot yeah the, with the pace things to move if if we have the right intent with there seem to be we will be actually in a pretty good position but if we lose our track at any point of, over the course of a few years will again be you know i mean this time we will actually really lose the big race yes 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 i totally agree but uh, i believe that uh, we have uh, uh, already developed in the past few years so i think that in 5 years we may develop a lot more than we are right now that is true see uh, so uh, the, the, now the, there are two sides of thing what we were and what we are today it's a very uh, we have achieved a lot uh, when we yes. compare to ourselves but the problem is that you know you are just your race is not only with yourself your race is with everyone else around you with everyone uh, like yeah your country is not isolated from the world right so uh, that means that you know you will have to compete with the rest of the world and we have uh, lost some of our strategic advantages earlier uh there's a there's an opportunity you know with every generation there's a and every time and there's a every with every change there comes an opportunity that okay this could be your time there's an opportunity in front of us whether yes. in terms of the electric vehicle whether in terms of the artificial intelligence ai everything we could do a lot and uh, that that is one area we can actually we have the resources man power people and intelligence to build on that we need to capitalize on that yes okay so moving forward as we all know entrepreneurs have a lot of responsibilities on their shoulders and you have to live up to the expectations of other people to the expectations of your family so how do you handle the mental as well as physical stress you faced in your day to day life that's right very uh big question actually <laughs> see 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 most of the time you know uh, you try to plan things and then they don't yeah. work out the yeah. good part about is uh, you know that your plan will not work out even the uh, better part is that you plan again that okay this is what we are going to do so most of the time you fail on the things actually people don't accept it but most of the time you fail on uh, the things that okay like i will wake up at 7 am then i'll do this and that you don't do it actually yeah. most of the time you have something or the other to do 
but ultimately what you end up doing is that uh, okay you try again try again try again and you I, and most of the time see there will always be people who uh, will uh, be happy with you there will always be people who will not be able to you know you will not be able to satisfy like you know talking to your parents every day at 7 pm will not be possible and that's a hardcore yeah. hardcore fact right it's difficult life i mean um, you know uh, uh, running a early stage venture is very difficult so uh, at some point you know you should be okay with that okay i'm going to disappoint some people at any cost so I, that, that is a, that, that's a hard realization and you should start accepting that very early that okay they, it's not going to be uh, you know a perfectly rosy situation it is going to be very difficult and that should be okay you the agenda your agenda was not to uh, please people your agenda was to build something and find people who actually believe that okay we could uh, together we could build this thing or no so this is about uh, you know building early stage venture it is difficult it just pure play difficult okay uh, you just mentioned that uh, early age venture is difficult so do you uh, like when you tell somebody that you started a venture at an early age so do you uh, like uh, give them an uh, advice to uh, first do a job and then do a venture or what is your advice to somebody who wants to uh, do their own startup you should actually work uh, in a startup if you are planning to start someday that's a good advice uh, the bad one is that you should start any time you want and it, it it may always be the same see it now now there's a thing that if you work in a early stage startup you will realize that okay this is difficult part that actually sets you, uh, sets up the context for you that okay are you made up for this or no see at some point you know you will have to realize that everyone uh, uh, working in a startup is actually a very productive job uh, and starting on your own may not be the only thing you should uh, could work in a larger organization and add value you could work in a startup and add value and that should be okay uh, starting a venture some, uh, is usually done because someone decided that okay uh, like there is nothing in this particular segment so i have to start so that other people who are willing to work on this could actually come along so this is you know uh, someone has to take a initiative but a single person cannot build an organization right so a lot of people have to yeah. come on board on that as well but considering people who are willing to start someday do something you work in a startup for a few years that is actually very productive you understand things that okay how it is difficult it is but you know how to mitigate that as well okay okay, okay. yes completely uh, i agree to that completely actually because uh, we have spoken to uh, some people before you also and all of them have given the same advice to us that you should start up uh, actually do a startup when you feel that you're ready for it so yes yeah i, I yeah. agree to it yeah. yeah but but the thing is that you know you will never be ready for it that that is uh, that uh, difficult realization that at some point you will just have to decide that okay this is my time i have to start uh, of course you see the thing uh, about uh, being ready is that you are never ready for the question that you don't have and you and no one has answer to so you cannot be prepared for a situation that no one knows that is uh, has been you know the fundamental uh, thing behind the startup that you are trying to solve a problem which has not been solved earlier so that means there are question that no one has answers to that means you are, you will never be 100% ready so at some point you know you yeah. will just have to decide that okay this is my time yes um uh, so uh, this is something about your failures so each company has its own ups and downs so what failures did you face during your whole uh, first startup also and uh, your startup right now also the venture in the first one we uh, i mean it has always been you know, you know uh, ups and downs are always part of it if it's not there you know at some day uh, things are going very well and then you get paranoid as a founder yeah. you get paranoid that okay, it's going to well there must be something i'm missing and when it's going bad you already know that it's going bad so basically there's this paranoia uh, but um, you know in the earlier uh, first venture that i started uh, a lot of things went up and down you know we hired the people who did not uh, do a very good job that actually you know stretched um, our time from the time to market from 3 months to 15 months so basically there was year and half of overhead and everything that actually uh, led to some of the failure point that we ultimately had to uh, you know uh, come to and see in the future uh, and then 
we had to ultimately shut down so after a, a successful commercialization of the product what we could not do is a build a supply chain because we had missed a time and resources on something uh, because of someone else's uh, failure and you'll have to account for that that people are uh, inefficient sometimes they don't understand what you are trying to do sometimes they are unable to do what you expect them to do and that should also be okay but uh, see uh, when you start new you, you actually don't understand uh, those things are a lot you are like uh, you start that okay i have a conviction i like i'll change the world you know i'll um, like, uh, you know solve the climate crisis tomorrow morning and then you realize that it's a, it's a difficult job so yeah, it's going to take another 10 to 15 years and a very collective effort those are the question that you cannot be prepared up front because you don't actually know and there's and the another part is that you actually don't accept what people say it's a good and it's bad at the same time if you accept what people say you would not have started in the first place but if you don't accept what people say you will miss on the good advice as well at the same time so it, it it's a it's a process you know it's a journey of self realization you know building a startup is a journey of self realization we ultimately had to shut down the first startup then um, i mean since we have started uh, panini uh, for two and a half years there have been a lot of learnings ups and downs uh, um, we have realized these things are not going to work and there sh- there's going to be iteration so now we come with a very open perspective that okay, this may work or this may not work we have a conviction this should work this way if it's not going to work this way this is how it's, it's going to work this is how it's going to work so you should have you know the ulti- alternative plans you know failure is the point when you realize that okay we cannot try anymore as long as you are trying it's just a setback the, you ultimately that's the failure point right that okay now you are not trying anymore and it is uh, a done deal that okay i mean you are uh, you're still, you know you decide to quit that's when you have failed otherwise you are just trying and trying uh, made a uh, result someday in the positive uh, note that you just started with so this is how it actually goes there's no set part to it um, the failures uh, are the only point when uh, you have decided to quit how did you motivate yourself during that period of time i take a nap oh. i go to sleep i go to sleep yeah i mean <laughs> you know you cannot uh, uh, think uh, very well with a tired head so i go to sleep yeah. like uh, okay i mean because at that, at that particular point of time i cannot do anything anyway because if it's uh, if it's not a quick reaction situation uh, i take a nap if it's a quick re- reaction situation and i have seen something that uh, my experience tells me this could be it we do that otherwise if it's a very strategic uh, decision i take a nap and then i start fresh probably have a cup of tea or something and then then you know we start again that's a very good advice actually take a nap <laughs> yeah no no okay. sleeping is actually very good exercise yeah uh, i mean a relaxed act could actually think a lot that. okay so lastly before concluding today's episode we would like you to address our young minds about entrepreneurship okay that that is actually a difficult uh, question the uh, I, I, as i told you earlier that you know the uh, entrepreneurship is a journey of self realization you have to uh, be willing to that okay this is going to be a difficult uh, journey um, it's not uh, there is no set outcome that you start with you will uh, not know what is uh, going to happen but what you will actually understand is a lot of, about life more than building a venture or building a company you will actually learn a lot about life learn a lot about people and it will ultimately make you a better person what what it will also give you is uh, it's a difficult path you know uh, running a venture is difficult path so if uh, risk is uh, something that you uh, can take and calculate it very well go ahead i mean you know you ultimately don't know what is going to be in the future irrespective of the path you take so you might as well take the one that you think there there could be a better control on the outcomes so i think that should be uh, you know how entrepreneurship should be perceived oh okay. thank you so much mr sachin sir it was very inspiring and very nice to talk to you to have a chance uh, to talk to you yeah yeah, yeah. it's so it's, a, it's a lovely talking to you thank you thank you so much